Hello everybody. I hope you're all doing very well and I hope you've understood whatever we have done so far. We've done different types of interest rates, discounting factors, accumulation, present values and cash flows. So today's topic is something that we use regularly in our actual day-to-day -day life. So it is annuities. So I gave you a brief introduction about what annuities are. I told you that it is a series of payments that you receive on a regular basis and it is usually of the same amount. So that is what we are going to be studying today. So let's get started and please remember that this word annuity is going to follow you throughout your actuarial career. So pay a lot of attention to what annuities are all about, how the calculation goes around and what are the implications and applications of annuities. Where do we use annuities? I'm going to tell you that as well. So let's start with an example first. Let me tell you an example. Let me tell you uh, what is annuities with the help of an example. Suppose you're getting some uh, insurance for yourself. So suppose you're taking out a life insurance policy. What you do is you pay out regular premiums every year or every month as per the bill mode. You pay out premiums and then at the end of the period, you get some lump sum or at the time of death, you get some lump sum. So now these premiums that you are paying in at a regular interval, these are all termed as annuity. Now, as the name suggests, suggests it's annuity. So it has the word annual in it, but when we carry out our calculations in actuarial, we don't only deal with annual payments. We also deal with monthly or regular payments or weekly payments or quarterly payments. It can be any sorts of payments, but the word remains the same. It is annuity. So when we are dealing with regular series of payments, then we call it annuity. It's as simple as that. It is actually not a very new concept. It's just we are trying to find out easy formulae to derive our answers. It's just that. So we don't want to be calculating each and every present value and accumulation using all the, uh, all the uh, payments and then discounting them one by one and adding them up as we have done in the previous class. We want a formula that will finally give us the real answer that we need ultimately. We don't want to go through the entire calculation but because that is very time consuming and in real life you're not just going to have two or three cash flows you are actually going to have a very long series of cash flows for which finding an accumulation or a present value is going to be a very tedious task if you carry out those calculations one by one so we are going to try and find out such calculation formula which are going to reduce our work in the future the concept is not new it is just the same but we are just building up our knowledge on the actuarial point of view. So let's see with an example, how do we calculate it? It's not very different from what we have seen. Uh, first, I'll give you an example and then I'll explain all the definitions. So let's say that this is our timeline. As usual, we have a timeline. Then we start with time zero and we go to time one, n. Uh, uh, one, two, three, four and so on till n. Now, these can be in years or anything. We are not going into that. We are just considering n time units. So let's con consider this as years only. Now, what, when I say annuity, let's say that we are getting one pound at each time unit. So basically at time one, two, three and so on till time n, every year or every time unit, I am getting one pound. Now I want to calculate the present value of this one pound at time zero. How am I going to do that? It is very simple. We have done this in the previous class. We want to find these values at time zero. So we are just going to discount everything back to time zero, right? This is what we've done. So one, uh, so let's see for this one, we are going to do one into V. Let's just take the discounting factor directly. We don't we already know that V is equal to 1 plus I to the power minus 1. So to save our uh, writing effort, let's just use V because we have that. 
then we are going to have 1 into when we discount back for 2 years we are going to have v square then we are going to have 1 into v cube when at time 3 we have 1 pound so again discounting this back so we will have 1 multiplied by v cube this will go on till when we have 1 into for this value we will have v to the power n minus 1 because it will be n minus 1 minus 0 so we are discounting back for n minus 1 years and the last one is going to be 1 into v to the power n so this is what our present value of an annuity of 1 pound every year for n years is going to be for uh, and this annuity where we are receiving some money at the end of the period we are not receiving one pound in the beginning of one the, of, of the first year we are receiving one pound at the end of each year so this annuity is known as an annuity in arrears so we call this an annuity in arrears and the representation the symbol that we use is a n at the effective rate of interest i so sometimes when the effective rate of interest is very obviously given to us then we can also omit writing the i but a n with this half square remains as it is so this is the basic representation when we want to find an annuity in arrears of any amount that is payable at the end of duration for n time units now if suppose this was t time units we would have written just a t it would have been a i t so this is just the number of time units that we are taking now let's say that we want to find the present value of i at n that is basically the accumulation of these series of payments this annuity in arrear we want to find the accumulation at time n so now what are we going to do we are going to accumulate everything right so we are going to basically accumulate everything now from time 1 to time n there are n minus 1 years so what we are going to do is 1 multiplied by 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 and then we go to the next step that is the uh, uh, the one pound that we get at time two so this we are going to accumulate for how many years n minus two years so this is going to be one into one plus i to the power n minus two and so on we'll keep going till we get for n minus one we'll accumulate for how many times we'll accumulate only for one year so it will be one plus i to the power one and then this one pound we are only receiving at time n so we don't need to accumulate or discount it back anywhere so we'll just get as one and this we represent as s i n so remember when we are trying to find the present value at time zero we use the notation a i n and if we are trying to find the accumulation at time n we find s i n let's look at some notations that we uh, skipped earlier so uh, an annuity is a regular series of cash flows usually purchased from or payable to a financial institution we've seen that a pension is an example that we can see other than uh, the insurance premiums that i gave you then the cash flows are certain so basically we are saying that there is no probability attached to these cash flows they are all certain the you are sure that you will receive this one pound at the end of every year for n years so there is no doubt about it there is no risk involved at all so when the cash flows are certain we call it an annuity certain so please uh, remember to note down this term it is very important annuity certain so simple annuities such as one time unit per time uh, per annum for n years appear very often in financial problems we have seen this the simple uh, the simplest annuity has cash flows of one unit at the end of each of the next n time units this is an annuity payable once per time unit in arrears for n time units for n a positive integer so n is going to be 
a positive integer it is not going to be uh, some half years or some quarters it's just going to be exactly uh, five six seven how many ever it can be but it's going to be basically a natural number now before we move on to derive the uh, results to derive the formula let me take you back to school where we did something that is known as the geometric series I hope you all remember and if not, it's fine, completely fine. We'll revise this again because this is an important uh, part that we are going to use in our calculations and to derive the formula for annuities. So what geometric series is basically we are having a series of payments and we are actually increasing each and every successive payment or each and every successive term by a constant factor. So here I'm taking R as the common factor and this factor is increasing in every term. So basically first the second term has multiplied one with R then the second uh, the third time I multiply R by R the third uh, the fourth time I multiply R square by R so every time I'm multiplying with the factor with the common factor R and let's call this X and this R let me tell you it is greater than zero it is a positive uh, number it can be in decimal places or anything but it is a positive number it is not negative it's just greater than zero so let's say I want to find the sum of these uh, terms. So I have called this R. So for the first step what I do is I multiply this with a term that is R minus 1. So I multiply both sides by R minus 1. So what I get here is uh, 1 plus R plus R square plus R cube and so on till R n minus 1. This is going to become what R minus 1 into x. Now let's look at this RHS here. This is R into uh, R minus one into X. So R into uh, X into R minus one is nothing but X R minus X. I'm just opening the brackets, nothing else. And let's put the value of X from equation one that we have here. Basically the definition of X, let's replace it with this. So we have R outside the brackets and then we have 1 plus R plus R square and so on till R n minus 1. And then we have a minus and we again have X here. So this is again going to be 1 plus R plus R square plus so on till R minus n minus 1. Now let's solve this. So we get R plus R square plus r cube and so on till r n now because this is r n minus 1 and we multiply r so it becomes r n minus 1 plus 1 so r n and then let's take the second term let's just take this into brackets to avoid any confusion now let's take the second term which is 1 minus r because we're just taking the minus inside so r square minus so on till minus r n minus 1. So what you'll notice here is except for this minus 1 sorry except for this minus 1 and r n all the other terms get cancelled. They cancel out each other. So basically what you're left here is with r n minus 1. Now let's go back to the initial equation that we had. It was x into r minus 1 is equal to rn minus 1. So this is what we've got. Let's take the r minus 1 in the denominator here. So rn minus 1 upon r minus 1 and this is what we get as the sum of the geometric series. So basically this is what is equal to 1 plus r plus r square and so on till r n minus 1. So basically, if you have n terms with uh, a, a, a factor, a multiplicative factor of r, then this is what the sum of the series is going to be here. So now you know how to find the sum of a geometric series. Now we are going to look at the 
formulae for calculating annuities and the accumulation factors. So let's look at some terminology first. I is the constant effective rate of interest. So now be careful that we are using constant effective interest rate. We are not changing the interest rate every year or every time duration. We are keeping the interest rate same for throughout the duration. Then SIN is the accumulation at time N of the annuity. We've seen this. AIN is the present value at time zero of the annuity. Be careful about the times. So this is what is important. Then when the rate of interest is clear from the context, we often omit the I sign and we just write A, I, A, N and S, N. So we've done all this. All right. Let's move on to the formula. Finally, the accumulated value and the present value. So the accumulated value S, N is given by 1 plus I to the power N minus 1 upon I and Present value is given by a n which is equal to 1 minus v n divided by i. Now I have given you both these relationships and I have told you what the geometric series is. Now what I want you to do is pause this video here and try to prove these relationships. I have given you the expanded form of s n. I have given you the expanded form of a n and I have told you what the geometric series gives. So just pause this video over here and try to prove this relationships using first principle. First principle is basically using the expanded form of SN and finding this relationship that I've written over here. So you have both the LHS and RHS. Just try to prove it using geometric series and then we'll see if your answer is correct. In the meanwhile, also while you're solving this, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you get notified about the next video very soon. Okay, so I'm hoping that you all by now found the relationship very easily, but let's just see if you haven't been able to find it. Let's just see how to do it now. So we start with time zero and we go to time n and we are having payouts of one pound every year until n. So let's first look at the accumulation value, which is Sn at the, power, at the rate i. So this can be written as if we start from the end, then this is 1 plus 1 plus i. Because at time n minus 1, you will get 1 pound and that you are going to accumulate at 1 uh, for 1 duration. And then we will get 1 plus i to the power 2 and so on you will get until where you have one pound at time one. So this will be accumulated for n minus one. So this will be one plus i to the power n minus one. Now, can you see a relationship between this and the geometric series that we saw earlier? Can you say that this over here, r is equal to 1 plus i and every uh, next term, every successive term is being multiplied by this factor r. So, is it not convenient to say that Sn will be something like 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 upon 1 plus i minus 1 because we're just replacing r. So, basically x in the geometric series was r n minus 1 upon r minus 1. So we are just writing the same thing and in the denominator we can just cancel out the 1. So it leaves us with 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 upon i and that is what the relationship we had was. So we can write that the formula for calculating accumulation value of an annuity arrear of 1 pound per annum or per time unit for n years is nothing but 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 divided by i. Now for a n either you can go the same way and calculate from first principles or if you remember in the previous video we did something where we just calculated the present value or accumulation at one time and discounted or accumulated it at the other time. So basically what I'm saying is that can a n be written as s n multiplied by 1 plus i to the power minus n. 
why so because sn is at time n so we are finding the accumulation at time n and if this value i just discount back to zero then i can easily find the present value at time zero so basically this is going to be nothing but pvi at zero and this that we have this sn is nothing but pvi at time n so we have already looked at this relationship in the previous class so let's see how we can just uh, calculate this so sn we have as 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 upon i and if we multiply this with 1 plus i to the power minus n then what we get is very simple so we just get so we just multiply these two terms and what we get is 1 here because this will be 1 plus i to the power 1 plus i to the power n minus n actually minus of 1 plus i to the power minus n divided by i so now 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 is going to be nothing but 1 plus i to the power 0 which comes out to be 1 actually and 1 plus i to the power minus n divided by i so this is going to give us what we had as a relationship as 1 minus v n why v because 1 plus i to the power minus 1 is equal to v so we can write this as v and divided by i remains as it is so this is how we can get the relationship for an a present value of annuity in earlier payable for n time units at, at the interest rate effective i per time unit so I hope this is clear to everybody. This is not very difficult. You just need to understand the concepts and go one by one in the chronological order and it is very easy to find the answers to these questions. Let us look at an example now. Using a rate of interest 12% per annum effective, find the accumulation at 20 years of 1000 payable yearly in arrear for 20 years. Let's look at this part first and then we'll move on to the next. So representing this in the manner that we represented the, uh, the accumulation and present values earlier, we can say that we want S20 because it is for 20 years and the accumulation at, uh, that we need is at the end of 20 years. So we need S20 at the rate 12% of multiplied by 1000 because we have 1000 payable yearly in arrear for 20 years so how are we going to calculate this we'll just have 1000 as it is and we can simply replace this by the formula so we'll have 1 plus i to the power n which is 20 minus 1 divided by 0 0.12 which is the i so we can find this relationship from here. So this is going to come out to be 1000 multiplied by 72.05244, something like that. And uh, if you multiply these, the final value will come out to be 72052.44. So let's look at the next example. The present value now of 7,000 payable yearly in arrear for the next 15 years. Now, since again, we have an arrear and we need the present value this time. So if this was the first part, the second part is going to be very easy again. A for how many years? 15 years. So it is going to be 15. And the rate of interest again is 12% per annum. And the value that we need is 7,000 is payable yearly in arrear for next 15 years. So we'll have what? 1 minus V is what? 1.12 to the power minus and N is 15. So it will be minus 15 divided by 1, 0.12 because this is I. So we'll just calculate this value, the factor and multiply that by 7000 and we'll get our answer this will be 47676.05 so now let's look at the third uh, example which we have as 
calculate the present value now of 500 pounds payable at the end of each of the next 14 half years now be careful this is half years till now what we were doing is we were calculating in terms of full years now we are calculating in terms of half years so 500 is payable twice a year basically so let's draw a timeline and try to understand how this is going to work so uh, let's say we are have here zero then half then 1 1.5 two and so on until 7 why 7 because 14 half years is going to become seven complete years so now what we are having is we are having at the end of every half year we are getting 500 pounds so this is what we want and again at the end of 7th year we get 500 pounds so the total number of payments here is 14 now let's see if we calculate from first principles then we have present value at i and i is 12% per annum now here you have to be careful about the effective interest rate and the time unit because it's different so what we will get as the present value is 500 multiplied by so so we will discount back 500 to zero first from time 1 so it will be 1 plus i to the power minus half then we'll add the next cash flow that is 1 plus i to the power minus 1 then the third will be 1 plus i to the power minus 1.5 and so on till 1 plus i to the power minus 7 because the last payment will be at the end of the 7th year and we'll discount it back to 7 years so to till 0 we'll discount this back so either we can calculate using this formula or what we can do is we can find this effective interest rate in terms of half years and then use our regular annuity arrear formula how we are going to do that now since we know that i is equal to 12% per annum so to calculate the effective rate of interest how much percentage do we get per 6 year 6 months or per half year that we need to calculate this so we'll do what we'll simply take 1 plus i is equal to 1 plus j square and j will be the effective a uh, uh, percentage effective rate of interest per half year so since there are two half years in a year so we will take to the power 2 and what it's going to give us is 1.12 is equal to 1 plus j to the power 2 and we can simply solve this how 1.12 square root or just to the power half minus 1 and this is going to give us 0. 058301 so which means that j over here is 5.8301% per 6 months so now we have the effective rate of interest per 6 months or per half year and the time units is also in half year so we have n is equal to 14 half years now we can simply use our formula for annuity in arrear the present value of annuity in arrear now our n is going to be 14 and the interest rate is going to be 5.8301% so uh, the amount is 500 pounds payable half yearly for 7 years so we have 500 multiplied by the formula that is for annuity which is 1 minus 1.05 Eight three zero one to the power minus what fourteen? Why? Because the time units here is fourteen half years, and we have already taken the interest rate into half years. So this will be divided by i, which is zero point zero five eight three zero one. So be careful that all the calculation that we do now will be with the new interest rate that is j and not i, which was twelve percent per annum. Because the payments are in half year, that is why we have to convert these uh, uh, interest rates also into half yearly. This will come out to be some. Four six nine six point seven eight pounds. 
you can check your answers and let me know if you have any doubts then we'll uh, get into the doubts i'll try my best to solve all your doubts and we are ending this video over here again as i always say that if you like this video please hit the like button also hit the notification bell if you have subscribed and if you haven't subscribed do subscribe right away because there is another video coming up very soon in which we will discuss annuity due so let me give you a brief introduction about what annuity due is so annuity due when i say this was annuity in arrear where the payments were at the end of every time unit so we did not have any uh, payment of the time unit so basically if we started from years then we were receiving payments at the end of each year but in annuity due what we have is we receive payments in the beginning of the year so we receive all the payments in the beginning of the time so we don't receive any uh, any payment at the end of the time so we receive all the payments in the beginning so the number of payments remain the same but there is going to be a loss of interest so if you are discounting back then at time zero you will not discount back this item and if you are accumulating then you would accumulate this item and there would be no uh, item over here which needs to be accumulated whereas over here you had one another payment at the end of the year we will do examples we will look at the formula again there is going to be a slight change in the formula but it's not very difficult so you will be able to adapt very easily so till then keep practicing keep learning and keep following uh, i'll see you in the next video and let me know again if you have any doubts i'll be very happy to solve them I'll see you in the next video. Keep learning guys. Bye bye. Take care.